and we can use the fill space option for this. So essentially what we want to do is go ahead and wrap this content div that we've already created in another div and I'm going to call this main. Let's go down and end that div there. And let's just go ahead and indent this content here. Uh, now inside style.css I want to go ahead and style uh, this main here. So main. And all I'm going to do is give it a height of 300 pixels. Now you'll see that nothing's changed, it hasn't filled to that particular space. So inside ui.js we can specify um, a couple of, well, one option, and that is fill space. And if we set that to true, by default it's set to false, that will fill a particular space. So you can see that now we're 300 pixels down and this has filled the uh, space that we require. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at things like changing these icons here. Now, you can either provide a custom set of icons, which I'm not going to go ahead and uh, and go through because it's too much CSS to probably include in the tutorial. Um, however, we're going to use a predefined set of icons and change these drop down little icons here. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to do that. I'm going to comma separate this and come down just so we've got enough room. And I'm going to specify the icons option. Now inside some more curly brackets, I'm going to go ahead and specify another two options. The first one being header, and the second one, uh, well we'll do the header first. We're going to set an icon for the header, and that's going to be UI plus icon, oh, sorry, UI icon plus. So now what's happened is, when we refresh, you can see that the ones that aren't open have a plus symbol here. Uh, you can go ahead then and comma separate inside of these curly brackets and say uh, set the, for example, header selected option. And we can set this to something like UI icon minus instead. So now when we refresh, we have plus and minus icons. So you can go ahead and set these to your own defined icons as well. Okay, so lastly, we're just going to take a look at um, the event. Um, in, which is an option itself, it's not a collection of events, uh, but this option will actually specify when the accordion opens, so when these particular panels actually open. So at the moment it's when we click on a particular header, that's all handled for us. However, we might want to go ahead and change the event to mouse over, for example. Now what this will do is we, when we roll over uh, an option without actually clicking on it, uh, each um, description area or div area actually opens as we roll over this header area at the top. Now we're going to take a look at the collapsible option now. Um, let's just go ahead and change this uh, event or delete this event option so we have uh, the clickable uh, option set. Okay, so what happens now if we want to say close portfolio? When I click on portfolio, I can't actually close it. So all, there always has to be one uh, div area open at a time. So inside here we can set the collapsible option to true um, and let's just spell that right, collapsible okay so we can set the collapsible option to true and what this means is that we can actually collapse uh, all of them so they can all be closed uh, otherwise you're gonna always have one open so this might be useful for for example when you uh, enter a website let's just say it is a personal uh, say web developers website you might just want to leave these open uh, these options closed before you allow your users to actually go ahead and immediately click on a um, on an option so if you were want, if you wanted to say let's just refresh the page, you can see that the first um, header and content has automatically opened. Uh, then we can go ahead and open subsequent uh, headers and uh, content areas. However, if you wanted to say enter the website and they all to be automatically closed, you would have to go and define an option inside of here, and that is the active option. Now, what you can do with the active option is either define a particular um, a particular header and content area that you want to be open. For example, if we were to set active to 2, when we refresh the page, this automatically opens this one. Remember, we start at 0, 1, and then 2. So 0 would be the first one, which is automatically set by default. Then you would have 1. Active 1 would open the second one, and then we've already taken a look at the last one. 
So by setting active to zero, we don't disable it. So what we need to do is specify false. And what this will do is it will deactivate all of the open elements. So now a user can enter the website, have all of them closed and choose which one they want to click. So this is extremely useful for functionality issues uh, if you wanted to click, keep all these areas closed. So I think we've taken a look enough at this accordion widget in the jQuery UI. It's an extremely powerful and easy to implement tool um, in order for you to have these content areas which expand when clicked.